This journey took place more than a decade ago. It is an eclipse chasing trip involving 30 eclipse chasers. The first leg of my trip was solo from the United States to Seoul, South Korea. 24 hour layover found me at the Best Western New Seoul Hotel. With only 24 hours in Seoul, there was not enough time to do more than just scratch the surface of this city. I was able to explore a few blocks in every direction from the Best Western Hotel. Here are a few pictures of the downtown section of the city that I was in. The next part of this journey was a flight from Seoul to Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. I was a day early, so I met up with Eddie and Amy Frank, the organizers of this trip. Eddie and Amy operate Tusker Trail out of Nevada. I have taken several trips with them and I believe they are fantastic and second to none. Also, they are not sponsors of me or this channel. Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, is the highest capital in the world. It is 4,429 feet above sea level. It also holds the distinction of sharing with Moscow and Ottawa as being the coldest capital in the world. Mongolia has a population of 3 million people. Nearly half live in Ulaanbaatar. The city does contain a number of ancient buildings and cultural sites. Just outside of town is a large open air trading area known as the Black Market. The Mongolians have a different memory of their ancient leader as do much of the rest of the world. Genghis Khan founded the Mongol Empire in 1206 AD and spread his power outward through much of the known world. Mongolians think of him as a great leader, even naming the international airport in Ulaanbaatar after him. My second day in town, we met with the rest of the team for a meet and greet. We had dinner at a local restaurant that was great. The food was good, but what was really great was the teenage girl who performed on a small platform as a contortionist. She ended her performance suspending her entire body by her mouth. The next leg of the adventure was a four-hour flight on two chartered twin-engine Russian turboprop airplanes, taking us to the far western portion of Mongolia, where we met up with the local guides with 19 Russian four-wheel drive vans and five support trucks. Then we were off on a three-day trip into the wilderness. The actual trip to the eclipse site was two days driving for a total of 150 miles, but it will take us three days spending two nights at the first base camp. Plus, there may be time used for repairs or a flat tire or two along the way. This part of the country has almost no infrastructure. The roads are practically trails that have been driven on enough to make them resemble roads. With numerous rivers and creeks along the way and no bridges, fording them becomes the only method of crossing them. Mongolia is known as the land of eternal blue sky. Also, in this portion of the country, besides rivers and creeks, there are numerous lakes. Finally, we arrive at the first base camp.
After setting up the first base camp and relaxing a little, some of us decided to explore the nearby area. After plenty of good food and two good nights sleep at our first base camp, we were on the move again. This part of Mongolia is beautiful, if you don't mind being off the grid. While on the road, we came across a stone crop structure, prehistoric and said to be what's left of the original stone monument built thousands of years ago. Finally arriving at our final destination and setting up our base camp. Our base camp was set up on the east bank of an awesome lake with crystal blue clear water. If this area was not so remote and in a different country, a resort would probably be built here. Part of the experience was to be shown some Mongolian traditions by our local guides. One night at our base camp, we were treated to a fantastic dinner courtesy of our locals obtaining a goat from a passing herd. The Mongolian tradition is to cook the animal both on the inside and out. This is done by stuffing the animal with hot stones. Also, out of respect for the sacrifice the animal has made, its head is cleaned and placed on the platter. While luggage on a trip like this is kept to a minimum, we had a little space left on one of the trucks, and somehow a kayak was loaded. Also, a photo opportunity with local bald eagle handlers followed. While our base camp was surrounded by local nomads and their gurs, a few of us decided to walk out for a visit. We were welcomed in an unbelievably friendly fashion. We were then treated to a performance by a few locals, throat singing and a lovely dancer. Finally, after years of planning, it was time for the main event, a total eclipse of the sun. To celebrate, we gathered around a fire that night for a sing-along. The event attracted dozens of nomads from miles away. We were treated to Mongolian traditional songs. Now breaking camp, we were headed back to the original landing strip. On the way, we encountered a small village in the middle of nowhere. We stopped for a few hours, and the locals were very friendly. Even received a guided tour of the local Muslim mosque. As we make our way back to our airstrip in Ulaanbaatar to wrap up our adventure, Several of the team members tell me that this was the trip of a lifetime. I personally never used that term. Having visited six continents, I still look forward with amazement to what awaits me at still unexplored, unexamined, amazing places on this planet. Who knows, just over the next horizon may reveal an adventure that I've never dreamed of or even been able to imagine. The trip of a lifetime? The trip of a lifetime may still lay ahead.